My name is Dorian Hauser. I'm the Director of Conservation Biology at the National Marine Mammal Foundation. I'm also the primary investigator on this project, uh, which is to study the hearing of minke whales. We had a big jump forward in our success in 2023. Um, this past field season, we were able to test the hearing of two minke whales. Indeed, very successful. We had a lot of troubles, a lot of bad weather, a lot of other technical problems. Uh, but in the end, um, in the end, this, the project has been a great success. Two animals safely captured in the hammock, and we measured its uh, auditory brainstem response. I would say, all, all uh, things considered, this has been a great year. So the point of this project is to obtain the first hearing curve on a baleen whale. The technique we're using uh, is called the auditory evoked potential method, uh, which requires us to measure voltages produced by an animal's brain when it hears a sound. The hearing tests have settings associated with them that are species specific, and we don't know what those settings are for the minke whale. So the first animal that we tested, we spent time trying to record the auditory brainstem response, knowing that once we were able to capture that, we had most of our settings known for what we would need to do to study or test hearing at different frequencies. So the first animal that we caught, um, we, we did just that. We worked out the settings and we obtained the auditory brainstem response. The second animal, that animal we went a little further and used more frequency specific kind of sounds, if you would, uh, to test the range of hearing. And with that, we were able to show that these animals are capable of hearing above 45 kilohertz, which is higher than what people thought based upon the anatomy of the animal. No one has ever done this kind of work, capturing, handling, and directly measuring the hearing of minke whales, let alone any uh, baleen whale. So there's a lot of uncertainty involved, and we understand there's risk, uh, both to humans and animals. Uh, one of our primary goals is to ensure the safety and welfare of the animals. Uh, to that end, we want to make sure any sort of handling that we um, uh, utilize, or any handling of the whale, uh, is we monitor it to make sure that there's no long-term stress uh, or harm to the animal. For that reason, we are required under our permits uh, to put satellite tags on the animals so we can monitor their movements after they've been released from the hearing test. So this is a dorsal fin uh, single pin tag. We'll put it behind the dorsal fin. And uh, it's set up for uh, 200 transmissions per day. We hope we will go for uh, five months or plus. We will see um, the first tag we put out is, is functioning. And we went crossing the fjord and went westwards towards the island of Rust and uh, Vare. So it's uh, kind of uh, thought we, we, we will see that track on these small animals. So we are very excited about see, to see uh, the long track of this. To date, we have put out two satellite tags, uh, and that has provided us information about the minkies that we have not had before, uh, specifically getting some fairly fine-tuned information on the, the patterns of their migration. Uh, of the two animals that we tested, uh, one of them went across the fjord from where we were uh, and stayed and milled about that area for some period of time before the tag failed. They all eventually failed. Uh, and the second one uh, went uh, out to the ocean and then back along the north coast of Norway, um, ultimately ending up in Russian territorial waters of the Arctic. A lot of the management of uh, uh, human-made sound uh, is based on knowledge of the animal's um, hearing. And for baleen whales, we don't all have that knowledge, and therefore this project is so important. For the species where we do have that knowledge, uh, it is a very important part of how the uh, how uh, sound pollution is managed. We're looking forward to next year because even though the information about the hearing range is already um, getting noise producers and regulators uh, talking about making changes in regulations, we know that when we get the final audiogram, that will be the critical and most key component they need to be able to do their jobs. And that's what we're going to do in 2024.